Alright, g'day folks, my name's Ashley and today I'm going to do another NDB approach into Moorabbin. This time I've got wind plugged into it. Uh, one of the viewers out there just requested that I put some wind into it and I was like, you know what, fair enough, I'll give it a go. It's been over two decades since I've flown NDB in real life because you just don't fly them anymore. Anyway, uh, I've got the NDB tuned in on the fixed card ADF, I've got the um, current inbound track, we're at 4,000 feet. And that is uh, Moorabbin NDB, so we're just over 17 miles away, currently 173 knots now. Obviously the speed's way, way too fast for this aircraft. You would never cruise in the yellow arc. That's just silly and asking for trouble. So, just pull it back to 23.23. And I'll just quickly do an NDB brief as we're heading inbound, and it'll continue to slow down. And just take note of the ADF. The needle we want, they were aligned and already the needle was starting to, get to move to the right. And remember when you're tracking inbound you want to follow the head of the needle, meaning the needle is to the right of the track we currently want. So in order to get back on track I'll need to go to the right. But I haven't changed my heading yet the needle is going to the right, which means I can tell you right away the wind's coming from my right hand side. And based on my ground speed versus, well actually the aircraft hasn't really settled down yet. I think it's a I think it's a, I mean obviously this is indicated, not true airspeed, but it's indicating about 145, but yeah, our ground speed's about 160. Maybe there's a bit of a tailwind, so if I were to guess it's somewhere in this quarter. But anyway, uh, for the NDB approach into Moravin, it's NDB Alpha, it's not for a specific runway. It starts overhead the Navate at 4,000 feet, we are currently at 4,000 feet tracking inbound, which we'll pretend it's tuned and identified. We're not going to have the Morse code blaring in our ears as we do this. Uh, tracking inbound, uh, the outbound, or there's a, sorry, there's a one minute holding pattern, tracking 238, so that's 238, about there. So just imagine this. That's 240 there. 238, now let's just put about there. So currently we're about here. Tracking inbound of the Navade, we'll do left hand hold and track inbound, then go outbound, 238 for four minutes, and inbound tracking, whoops, I don't know why it does that, tracking inbound 070. Uh, once we're overhead the navigator and tracking outbound, we can descend as low as 1,400 feet until we are established inbound, which then we can descend to 720 feet, which is our MBA. Mr. Approach starts overhead the navigator tracking 158, which is a sharp right turn, climbing back to 2,200 feet. However, we're not gonna do a missed approach it's just for demonstration purposes. But anyway, um, as you can see, we are con continuously getting pushed. So we haven't changed our heading in that entire time, yet the needle continues to go to my right, meaning the wind is from here. Okay, the aircraft speed has settled down. We're about 143 indicated. It's not exactly the true airspeed, but it's in the ballpark. Clearly, ground speed 160, <laughs> it's a tailwind, so it's somewhere in our rear quarter already. So when we're going 238 inbound, or just say 240, uh, it's going to be our forward right quarter. Right. So let's correct it a bit. See how much, well the wind correction angle is going to be different at 100 knots. So I'll tell you what, I'll slow down now to 100 knots. So I'll pull the power back to 19 inches, so we can work out a wind correction angle. And we'll wait for our speed to go below 140, which is the extend maximum extend speed for the undercarriage of the gear. Okay, speed's below 140, I'll put the gear down. That'll slow us down a bit. As you can see the speed's washing off. Yeah, we're still in transition. And we have three greens indicated. So I'm just put the fuel pumps on. Left fuel pump, fuel pressure's still good on the left. Right fuel pump on. Right fuel pressure's still good. Uh, I'll do all the pre-landing checks right now. Uh, brakes are working off, undercarriage is down lock, we have three greens. Mixture is rich, uh, fuel selectors are on both, fuel pumps are both on. Instruments, uh, fuel quantity is reading good, fuel pressure and both good. Oil pressure is both good and left and right. Oil temperature is good, left and right. Cylinder temperature is good, left and right. Let's probably open them up actually. The cylinders. Cow flaps are open. Uh, so that'll give the cylinders a chance to sort of cool down a bit. Uh, electrical load's good. Switches are on both. Hatches and harnesses. Make sure you're all secure. Oops, that's was already on. Oh, already on. Well, 
Okay, pre landing checks uh, complete. And we're into white arcs, so uh, I'll put 10 degrees of flaps out. And I'll put the throttle back up to 21 or 22 inches. And that should keep us at about 100 knots. Okay. Now, obviously, we've been pushed a lot, so we're going to have to let's just work out what the wind correction angle is going to be. So, we've already worked out the wind's coming from our right, from the forward quarter. And in the hole, we can actually narrow down uh, the exact direction the wind's coming from. Let's have a look. That's about five degrees more. Now let's see. Uh, I'll add. I'll put about ten degrees. Wind correction angle, ten degrees. And let's see how that holds. So we should see it about 10 degrees to our left of our nose for it to be on track. Just put that there. So that's 10 degrees there. I want it to stay at about 10 degrees. We've still got six miles to go. Is the needle st st steady? Just watch it for a moment as we're doing everything else. Actually, want to be at 100 knots. That seems to be holding pretty well. Now at this speed, at these speeds, uh, normally I get. Oh, okay. Now the is a little bit low. Normally at 21 or 22 inches, I'll get 100 knots. Now I've got the 10 degrees flaps, so the RPM is a little bit low. I think that's what it was. That seems to be holding fairly steady, so 10 degrees seems to be a good wind correction angle. We've still got just under 5 miles to go. Uh, let's see, it's 2.8, uh, sorry, 2.38 is the inbound, so that's there, so that's the direct entry, so we'll make our left hand turn as soon as we get overhead. Alright, I've got a wind correction angle of 10 degrees, so I've probably got a crosswind of about 20 knots because at these speeds, and you can use the e E6B to determine your wind correction angle. It's based on not only the wind direction and your wind speed, but also your true airspeed. I do these at 100 knots. I was taught to do the fly duchess at 100 knots. And approximately 100 knots, it's not exact, but a good rule of thumb is at about 100 knots true airspeed, for every knot of crosswind you have, you need about a half a degree co correction angle in the direction the wind's coming from. Meaning, I've got about 10 degree wind correction at the moment, so the crosswind's probably about 20 knots. And we worked out it was coming from this side, from our right. So and we are getting close to the navigate, so that might be part of the sensitivity of the, of the needle movement. That seemed to be pretty steady for most of the time. Now, once I get overhead, I'll go outbound for one minute, but my wind correction angle outbound is going to be twice that. So what it is is my heading is going to be actually uh, two, three, eight. It's going to be about here, so my wind correction angle is going to, my heading is going to be around about here somewhere by the time I'm outbound on the. You'll, you'll see, you'll see. But that 10 degrees seems to be pretty good. We are getting a little bit out of tolerance. We're pretty close to out of tolerance, but. Yeah, it's about 15 degrees difference, so that's at 10 right now. And we should be able to gain a little bit of... Yeah, see so yeah, how the needle's moving a little bit slowly towards what we want, so that means the wind correction angle's too big. But we are getting close to the navigate. I notice our ground speed is 101 knots, indicated is almost 100. So it's pretty much all crosswind, like 270. Right, 0.7 miles to go. And the needle's going to get very sensitive now. Alright, so 28, 238. 
about there. So our heading's going to be about here. Alright, there's Station Passage, start our left turn. And obviously we still do it at rate 1, maintaining the same speed. The initial one, I'll do for 1 minute. But as we're turning, and I just quickly discovered this the other day, because when I flew NDBs in real life, they didn't have GPS and uh, GPS ground speed. It is awesome, it helps so much, because look, take note of the ground speed as we're turning. It's increasing. What does that mean? The tailwind's increasing, right? When's the tailwind most prominent? When it's directly behind you. One twenty-two. One twenty-one. So it's around here. It's around here somewhere. And as we're turning out, bound because we know the wind's coming from this direction. It's pushing us out further than normal. That's why I've got twice the wind correction angle on my outbound. As soon as I'm wings level, I'm going to start the timer because we are already past a beam. Because a beam would have been when this needle was about here. And we were already past it a little bit. So we're going to do it for one minute. But based on this speed, actually, it's 113. And we're, we're just under 100. Um, let's make it 45 seconds. Because the end result is they actually want the inbound leg of the holding pattern to be one minute. So that's 30 seconds already. That's 40 seconds. 45, alright, let's go back. Come on, oh shit. Come on. I think I have 10 degrees. Thereabouts, right? try that. And because we're now turning back in towards the wind based on what we've seen so far, and you'll see, look, the ground speed is dropping off. Now, our indicator airspeed is the same, our rate of turn is the same, we haven't changed the engine settings, the only thing changing is our ground speed. And you see how rapidly it's dropping off. Now around the west it was our highest tailwind, so we should get our lowest speed around about west. Take note of what it is. But at the same time, we're checking this 60 degrees, so we're about 10 degrees off. So as we're turning in, it's going to catch up still. 82.8. It's increasing. It's around here. That's 30 degrees, so we're only about 5 degrees off or something. It's actually looking pretty good. All right, and just let it settle for a sec. And that's 1 minute 55, so that was, that's pretty good. Uh, so that's about 12, 13 degrees. It's just showing about, just under 10 degrees to the left of those. Which way is the needle going? It needs, uh, uh, the needle's a little bit right of the track we want, but it seems steady. The 10 degrees seems to be working. I'll make it 15, or thereabouts. About 17. That's 15 there. Okay, let's turn back. Now yeah, we've got a mile to go, and it's 2 minutes 45. So it's the truck I want's about 12 degrees to my left. Oh, too much wind correction. You can see the needle is moving. And we're getting close too, so it's becoming more sensitive. So what I might do is let the wind blow us back on track. I'm not going to chase the needle. The best thing you can do is just let the wind blow back on track at this distance. I mean, we're half a mile, so we're over the airport. It'd be silly to, silly to chase the needle now. See, the wind's still blowing us back on track. Huh. I reckon the wind's around about 27280. And there's station passage right there. Start our turn. And that's 3 minutes 33. So I'll try 40 seconds this time. And 
double the wind correction angle, we're heading outbound. And once again, I just discovered this the other day, just messing around with this. Like, the ground speed's increasing, engine settings the same, air speed's the same, you're not climbing or descending, but yet your ground speed's picking up because the wind's more prominently behind you now. Watch, it was about 27 or 280 that we saw that wind, the ground speed was maximum, or, or least. 123, 123, 122, okay, it's at west, so it's around about here. <laughs> And then we're showing about 98 knots. It was like 120, 123. So, yeah, you know, it's like 20 knots or something. The winds. All right, so we're already past a beam. A beam would have been about here. So wings level, start the timer. I may have started the timer a bit late. So I'll make it 40 seconds. And once again, we have a ground speed. Uh, sorry, ground speed. Uh, tailwind, uh, 13 knots or so, thereabouts. So if it's tw if it was 20 knots, right, and this is a 13 knot tailwind, uh, all right, I reckon it's around here. Two eight zero. At about twenty. Ah, too much time. I messed that up. I was, I was distracted. Sorry about that. So that one was too long. That was about fifty seconds. And we already know from the 45 that that was too long. Uh, so we're actually going to go... 10 degrees seem to work alright. Once again the ground speed is dropping off. Let's like 280, let's see what it is there. Let's see, 83, 82... It's picked up. Yep, it's around a bit there. Alright, so that's about 10 degrees difference. It's showing about 10 degrees. Will it hold steady? Tail is the other, so the head of the nail is a little bit right of the track we want. So, just add five degrees there or thereabouts. Doesn't have to be exactly five degrees, but just enough in the right direction so that you get it to nudge and get the needle to move the way you want it to move. So that's 10, it's about 15, 16, 17. So it must be about there. Maybe about a mile to go, that's 2 minutes 37. But it is getting more sensitive too. Uh, we're 0.5 of a mile away. We're within the airport perimeter now. So in this case, I wouldn't chase the needle, but I'd let the wind blow you back on track. That's about it. And it's 3 minutes 30. Station passage. Yep. Let's try outbound. Just let it settle for a sec. I won't descend yet. 
Uh, we've got a headwind. Uh, let's estimates. Let's just assume we're doing 100 knots true airspeed. It's like 13 knots difference. So at about no, I'll add about 15 seconds. So in four minutes, 15. Let's start the timer. Let's make it about four minutes now on the timer. <laughs> Now let's see, we've got about 12 degrees difference, it's 10 degrees, so when you go on outbound you go to the opposite of the tail. Now the wind will blow us back on track. So that's about five, six, seven degrees, so that's five there. I think we can start descending. So I'm gonna lower the nose, pull back about 19 inches. And we're looking for about 500 feet a minute. That should get us about 100 knots. And we're looking for four minutes because I started the timer late. About 500 feet a minute, about 100 knots. And we can just set as low as 1400 feet. So we've still got about 7 degrees difference from the heading versus the track we want. Tail of the needle is about 7 degrees, that's about right. And at the 4 minute mark, normally it would have been 415 had I started the timer correctly because we've got a headwind. In this case, about eight knots, thereabouts, ten knots. So I would have gone, added an extra second for every knot of headwind. Uh, approaching in two minutes, so about two minutes to go. Apologies for my slackness on the timer. That seems to be holding fairly steady. I'll tell you, it's a right hand turn and we'll be tracking inbound 070. Just confirm it, 070. Which is there. So I'll make a right hand turn track inbound. So there's not much difference there. So I've still got a minute 30 to go. So I'm still tracking inbound 238. Should probably reduce it a little bit. So the needle's starting to move a little bit. Yeah, it's like five, six degrees difference there. It seems okay. Now the distance itself is not too important at the moment, it's more time. But if you do the approach four minutes outbound for f for four minutes at 100 knots, it actually is 6.6 dB. So we're getting pretty close. That's about there at 100 knots, and we still got 30 seconds to go. But I did start the timer late, so I'll, I'll start setting it up and I'll just start the turn. Zero seven zero inbound. We can descend as low as 1,400 feet. So this hand can go as low around one more time to here. Right, I'm going to start the turn inbound. And we worked out the wind's coming from 27280 at approximately 20 knots. So the wind correction angle is going to have to be on this side. It's going to be more tailwind. Zero. It's going to be about just over half the tail, half across wind. Ten knots, about there. Zero, seven, zero. So I reckon about that to maintain. Ok, 
Okay, we're approaching 2,000 feet. It's like 13, 14 degrees. Okay. Tail of the needle, uh, the head of the needle, we'll go to follow the head of the needle, it's to the left of the track we want, so I have to go a bit more. So that's a 20 degree intercept angle, so that needs to get to about 20 degrees there when we are on track. And until I'm inside that little notch there, the 15, I can't go below 1400. Just intolerance now, we got between there and there at the moment. So obviously we are getting back on track with this heading, so that's beyond the wind correction angle required. We're only just intolerance. Either way, we are intolerance, so we can keep going down. We can go to 720. We're five miles away. just intolerance though. 20 degrees difference. Yeah, it's about 16 degrees now. And we are continuing on to 720 so this large hand can go right around until here so we're actually not far off from our MBA already. And we're four miles away. Alright let's head back. Actually that's about 12 degrees I reckon. So for every knot of crosswind, about half a degree heading change towards the wind direction. So I estimate it was about 20, but it's probably not quite 20. Actually, that's probably too much of a correction. It's like 12. Which one's the next one? Yep, that's too, too much. See the needle still moving in. Still going to 720. We're intolerant still. Ground speed of 123, so clearly we have a tailwind. We have 1.3 miles to go. And there's the airport right there. Nav aid is actually there, right there. And we're only just in tolerance, probably about three, two, three degrees in tolerance now. The wind is slowly pushing us back on track because the wind is around about here somewhere. And approaching the MDA of 720. I would go at 740. All right, let's take a look at the flight analysis. Okay, here we are overhead the Moorabbin airfield. Obviously the NDB is around about here somewhere. This is the initial inbound track where we made a direct entry from overhead the NAVAID. And remember we determined the wind is coming from this general direction, 270-280, at about 20 knots. As we're turning outbound, obviously it's gonna push us further out than we expected, than, than you normally would in nil wind conditions. Hence that's why it's wider here compared to the other end. So that's why as we go in outbound, we did um, twice the wind correction angle. So I think the wind correction angle was about 10 degrees inbound, so we did 20 degrees outbound or thereabouts. When you're going outbound, if you only do the wind correction angle only going outbound, yeah, you'll stop blowing out further, but you won't regain the, the ground you lost when you're getting blown out. But if you do not only the wind correction angle, but double it, you're actually going to get back on track to where the, the holding pattern would have normally ended in nil wind conditions. So you would have been normally around here, but you'd end about here. Uh, distance wise, uh, it's somewhere around here is about the one minute hold in nil wind conditions. So that's actually pretty good. Distance wise, that's not bad at all. Uh, so initially, yep, 
we got pushed out wider than expected than than in normal but we expected that because the wind was from our right this is the tailwind going outbound we did twice the wind correction angle to come back inbound turning inbound we used the wind correction angle to try and maintain track we got back on track first and tried to maintain it and did it again the second time around and with the same wind correction angle we pretty much parallel the track that we did the first time around turned inbound a little bit sooner and we determined the time just because of the ground speed we had indicated on the GPS so we knew to turn inbound earlier than one minute and for every one knot of tailwind you take off one second when you're going outbound or if it's headwind you'd add one second for every knot of headwind because the inbound track the moment you turn and settle down on the inbound track that's meant to be one minute leg the inbound track but that's actually pretty good I'm happy with that the way it looks yeah, it looks like a bit of a foot, the heel and the, the toes. But uh, yeah, that's that's in wind conditions. So we went outbound. And it looks like it's pretty much on track over Ricketts Point. That's actually Ricketts Point uh, Beach Cafe, which you, that's about correct on track there. You almost fly over the top of it. And it is about in nil wind conditions at 100 knot tail. It's through airspeed. You do go 6.6 .6 miles from the nav mode. I, st I did start the timer late. We did see that we were 6.6, .6, so I did start the time the turn inbound. However, I should have probably gone a little bit further, as we did have the wind coming from over here. But anyway, we got back on track. We're within tolerance. We continue with that descent, and it actually looks like it was fairly steady. There wasn't much weaving, by the looks of it. And we got overhead the navade, paused it over over the top of the navade, and overall, I'm actually pretty happy with that. That looks pretty good. Yeah, granted, it doesn't look like a perfect racing track, but in wind, windy conditions, it's not going to look like a perfect racing track because obviously, tailwind here is so going to get blown out at the same rate of turn coming inbound. It's going to take up a much less area turning into the headwind. So that's why it's shaped like that. But yeah, I'm actually quite happy with that. That came out quite well. And in real life, it's been over a decade since I've. It's, probably, it's closer to two decades since I've flown an NDB in windy conditions in real life. And it was playing around with this the other day, watching the GPS ground speed that I realized you can accur accurately pinpoint the direction the wind's coming from if you keep tabs on your ground speed as you're turning, provided you don't change engine settings, attitude, your, your rate of turns all the same, everything like that. Don't change anything else. Don't change flap settings or anything. Keep everything same, configured the same as you're turning because you're doing essentially in a hole. You're turning 360 degrees. You've got two half circles here joined with two straight lines in between. So you do turn all 360 degrees. And while you're doing it, just check your ground speed and see what direction you're fastest and you're slowest. They're going to be the opposite ends of your HSI or your DG. And that's going to be the direction your wind's coming from. It's actually pretty straightforward. It's actually pretty cool. And it really didn't occur to me until the other day. No one's told me that. I just saw it the other day. I worked it out. It's awesome. So, yeah. Hopefully this video has been of some help for you. Um, I'm going to be getting back into the aircraft, aircraft accident videos now because um, that's really what I want to focus my videos primarily. So I'll, I'll do things like this occasionally and continue with the $100 hamburger films from time to time. Uh, just regular in route flights. But uh, I'll be heading to the aircraft accident videos once again. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Hope this helped for you. And if you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. All that jazz. And uh, I'll see you later. Take it easy.